What should you do before making a U-turn? Give an arm signal, as well as using your indicators. Check road markings to see that U-turns are permitted. Look over your shoulder for a final check. Select a higher gear than normal. If you have to make a U-turn, slow down and ensure that the road is clear in both directions. Make sure that the road is wide enough for you to carry out the manoeuvre safely. Ahead of you, traffic in the left-hand lane is slowing. What should you do? Slow down, keeping a safe separation distance. Accelerate past the vehicles in the left-hand lane. Pull up on the left-hand verge. Move across and continue in the right-hand lane. Allow the traffic to merge into the left-hand lane. Leave enough room so that you can maintain a safe separation distance, even if vehicles pull in ahead of you. You've broken down on a two-way road. You have a warning triangle. At least how far from your vehicle should you place the warning triangle? 5 metres, 16 feet. 25 metres, 82 feet. 45 metres, 147 feet. 100 metres, 328 feet. Advanced warning triangles fold flat and don't take up much room. Use one to warn other road users if your vehicle has broken down or if there has been an incident. Place it at least 45 metres, 147 feet, behind your vehicle or the incident, on the same side of the road or verge. Place it further back if the scene is hidden by, for example, a bend, hill or dip in the road. Don't use warning triangles on motorways. You're approaching a red light at a puffin crossing. Pedestrians are on the crossing. When will the red light change? When you start to edge forward onto the crossing. When the pedestrians have cleared the crossing. When the pedestrians push the button on the far side of the crossing. When a driver from the opposite direction reaches the crossing. A sensor will automatically detect that the pedestrians have reached a safe position. Don't drive on until the green light shows and it's safe for you to do so. What should the driver of the car approaching the crossing do? Continue at the same speed. Sound the horn. Drive through quickly. Slow down and get ready to stop. Look well ahead to see whether any hazards are developing. This will give you more time to deal with them in the correct way. The man in the picture is clearly intending to cross the road. You should be travelling at a speed that allows you to check your mirror, slow down and stop in good time. You shouldn't have to brake harshly. What does it mean if this light comes on while you're driving? A fault in the braking system? The engine oil is low, a rear light has failed, your seatbelt isn't fastened. If this light comes on, you should have the brake system checked immediately. A faulty braking system could have dangerous consequences. What does this sign mean? Bus is turning. Ring road. Mini roundabout. Keep right.
When you see this sign, look out for any direction signs and judge whether you need to signal your intentions. Do this in good time so that other road users approaching the roundabout know what you're planning to do. A driver's behaviour has upset you. What can you do to safely get over this incident? Stop and take a break. Shout abusive language. Gesture to them with your hand. Follow them, flashing your headlights. If you feel yourself becoming tense or upset, stop in a safe place and take a break. Tiredness can make things worse and may cause a different reaction to upsetting situations. What should you do when you're joining a motorway? Use the hard shoulder. Stop at the end of the acceleration lane. Slow to a stop before joining the motorway. Give way to traffic already on the motorway. You should give way to traffic already on the motorway. Where possible, traffic may move over to let you in, but don't force your way into the traffic stream. Traffic could be travelling at high speed, so try to match your speed to filter in without affecting the traffic flow. What's a rumble device designed to do? Give directions. Prevent cattle escaping. Alert you to low tyre pressure. Alert you to a hazard. A rumble device consists of raised markings or strips across the road designed to give drivers an audible, visual and tactile warning. These devices are used in various locations including in the line separating the hard shoulder and the left-hand lane on the motorway and on the approach to some hazards to alert drivers to the need to slow down. What does driving a vehicle with anti-lock brakes allow you to do? Brake harder because it's impossible to skid. Drive at higher speeds. Steer and brake harshly at the same time. Pay less attention to the road ahead. If the wheels of your vehicle lock, they won't grip the road and you'll lose steering control. In good conditions, the anti-lock braking system, ABS, will prevent the wheels from locking and you'll keep control of your steering. In poor weather conditions or on loose surfaces, the ABS may be less effective. When should you use hazard warning lights? When you slow down quickly on a motorway because of a hazard ahead. When you leave your car at the roadside to visit a shop. When you wish to stop on double yellow lines. When you need to park on the pavement. Hazard warning lights are fitted to all modern cars and some motorcycles. They should be used to warn other road users when your vehicle is causing a temporary obstruction, for example, after a collision or when it's broken down. Following drivers on a motorway of a hazard or obstruction ahead, they shouldn't be used as an excuse for dangerous or illegal parking. What's the right-hand lane used for on a three-lane motorway? Emergency vehicles only. Overtaking. Vehicles towing trailers. Coaches only. You should keep to the left and only use the right-hand lane if you're passing slower-moving traffic. 
Over what distance are you allowed to reverse? No further than is necessary. No more than a car's length. As far as it takes to reverse around a corner. The length of a residential street. You mustn't reverse further than is necessary. You may decide to turn your vehicle around by reversing into an opening or side road. When you reverse, always look all around you and watch for pedestrians. Don't reverse from a side road into a main road. In which conditions will your overall stopping distance increase? In the rain. In fog. At night in strong winds. Extra care should be taken in wet weather. On wet roads, your stopping distance could be double that in dry conditions. How would age affect an elderly person's driving ability? They won't be able to obtain car insurance. They need glasses to read road signs. They take longer to react to hazards. They won't signal at junctions. Be tolerant of older drivers. They may take longer to react to a hazard and they may be hesitant in some situations, for example, at a junction. You need to top up your battery. What level should you fill it to? The top of the battery, halfway up the battery, just below the cell plates, just above the cell plates. Top up the battery with distilled water and make sure each cell plate is covered. Which sign means no entry? Look for and obey traffic signs. Disobeying or not seeing a sign could be dangerous. It may also be an offence for which you could be prosecuted. It's a very windy day and you're about to overtake a cyclist. What should you do? Overtake very slowly. Keep close as you pass. Sound your horn repeatedly. Allow extra room. Cyclists and motorcyclists are very vulnerable in high winds. They can easily be blown well off course and veer into your path. Always allow plenty of room when overtaking them. Passing too close could cause a draft and unbalance the rider. You find that you need glasses to read vehicle number plates at the required distance. When must you wear them? Only in bad weather conditions at all times when driving, only when you think it's necessary, only in bad light or at night time. Have your eyesight tested before you start your practical training. Then, throughout your driving life, have checks periodically as your vision may change. On which occasion should you inflate your tires to more than their normal pressure? When the roads are slippery. When the vehicle is fitted with anti-lock brakes. When the tire tread is worn below two millimeters. When carrying a heavy load. Check the vehicle handbook. 
This should give you guidance on the correct tyre pressures for your vehicle and when you may need to adjust them. If you're carrying a heavy load, you may need to adjust the headlights as well. Most cars have a switch on the dashboard to do this. You're in a line of traffic. The driver behind you is following very closely. What action should you take? Ignore the following driver and continue to travel within the speed limit. Slow down, gradually increasing the gap between you and the vehicle in front. Signal left and wave the following driver past. Move over to a position just left of the centre line of the road. If the driver behind is following too closely, there's a danger they'll collide with the back of your vehicle if you stop suddenly. You can reduce this risk by slowing down and increasing the safety margin in front of you. This reduces the chance that you'll have to stop suddenly and allows you to spread your braking over a greater distance. This is an example of defensive driving. What's the shortest overall stopping distance on a dry road at 60 miles per hour? 53 meters, 175 feet, 58 meters, 190 feet, 73 meters, 240 feet. 96 meters, 315 feet. This distance is the equivalent of 18 car lengths. Try pacing out 73 meters and then look back. It's probably further than you think. What should you do when passing sheep on a road? Briefly sound your horn. Go very slowly. Pass quickly but quietly. Herd them to the side of the road. Slow down and be ready to stop if you see animals in the road ahead. Animals are easily frightened by noise and vehicles passing too close to them. Stop if signaled to do so by the person in charge. Which sign means no motor vehicles are allowed? You'll generally see this sign at the approach to a pedestrian-only zone. What does this sign mean? School crossing patrol. No pedestrians allowed. Pedestrian zone, no vehicles. Zebra crossing ahead. Look well ahead and be ready to stop for any pedestrians crossing or about to cross the road. Also, check the pavements for anyone who looks like they might step or run into the road. When must you stop your vehicle? If you're involved in an incident that causes damage or injury, at a junction where there are giveway lines, at the end of a one-way street, before merging onto a motorway. You must stop your vehicle when signalled to do so by a police or traffic officer, traffic warden, school crossing patrol, red traffic light. You must also stop if you're involved in an incident which causes damage or injury to any other person, vehicle, animal or property. A casualty isn't breathing normally and needs CPR. At what rate should you press down and release on the centre of their chest? 10 times per minute, 120 times per minute, 60 times per minute, 240 times per minute.
If a casualty isn't breathing normally, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR, may be needed to maintain circulation. Place two hands on the center of the chest and press down hard and fast, around five to six centimeters and about twice a second. You're driving behind a large goods vehicle. What should you do if it signals left but steers to the right? Slow down and let the vehicle turn. Drive on, keeping to the left. Overtake on the right of it. Hold your speed and sound your horn. Large, long vehicles need extra room when making turns at junctions. They may move out to the right in order to make a left turn. Keep well back and don't attempt to pass them on their left. During periods of illness, your ability to drive may be impaired. What must you do? See your doctor each time before you drive. Take smaller doses of any medicines. Make sure you're medically fit to drive. Take all your medicines with you when you drive. Only drive if you're fit to do so. Driving when you're ill or taking some medicines can affect your concentration and judgment. It may also cause you to become drowsy or even fall asleep. What's the meaning of this sign? Local speed limit applies. No waiting on the carriageway. National speed limit applies. No entry for vehicles. This sign doesn't tell you the speed limit in figures. You should know the speed limit for the type of road that you're on and the type of vehicle that you're driving. Study your copy of the highway code. What's the national speed limit on motorways for cars and motorcycles? 30 miles per hour. 50 miles per hour. 60 miles per hour. 70 miles per hour. Travelling at the national speed limit doesn't allow you to hog the right-hand lane. Always use the left-hand lane whenever possible. When leaving a motorway, get into the left-hand lane well before your exit. Reduce your speed on the slip road and look out for sharp bends or curves and traffic queuing at roundabouts. In daylight, an approaching motorcyclist is using dipped headlights. Why? So that the rider can be seen more easily? To stop the battery overcharging? To improve the rider's vision? The rider is inviting you to proceed. A motorcycle can be lost from sight behind another vehicle. The use of the headlights helps to make it more conspicuous and therefore more easily seen. How should you use the emergency telephone on a motorway? Stay close to the carriageway. Face the oncoming traffic. Keep your back to the traffic. Stand on the hard shoulder. Traffic is passing you at speed. If the draft from a large lorry catches you by surprise, it could blow you off balance and even onto the carriageway. By facing the oncoming traffic, you can see approaching lorries and so be prepared for their draft. You'll also be in position to see other hazards approaching. What will be the result of having your vehicle properly serviced? 
reduced insurance premiums, lower vehicle tax, better fuel economy, slower journey times. All vehicles need to be serviced to keep working efficiently. An efficient engine uses less fuel and produces fewer harmful emissions than an engine that's running inefficiently. Keeping the vehicle serviced to the manufacturer's schedule should also make it more reliable and reduce the chance of it breaking down. Who's especially in danger of not being seen as you reverse your car? Motorcyclists. Car drivers. Cyclists. Children. It may not be possible to see a small child through the rear windscreen of your vehicle. Be aware of this before you reverse. If there are children about, get out and check that it's clear before reversing. The left-hand pavement is closed due to street repairs. What should you do? Watch out for pedestrians walking in the road. Use your right-hand mirror more often. Speed up to get past the roadworks more quickly. Position close to the left-hand curb. Where street repairs have closed off pavements, proceed carefully and slowly, as pedestrians might have to walk in the road. What does this sign mean? Two-way traffic crosses a one-way road. Traffic approaching you has priority. Two-way traffic straight ahead. Motorway contraflow system ahead. This sign may be at the end of a dual carriageway or a one-way street. It's there to warn you of oncoming traffic. Where would you see this sign? In the window of a car taking children to school? At the side of the road? At playground areas? On the rear of a school bus or coach? Vehicles that are used to carry children to and from school will be travelling at busy times of the day. If you're following a vehicle with this sign, be prepared for it to make frequent stops. It might pick up or set down passengers in places other than normal bus stops. Which of these signs means turn left ahead? Blue circles tell you what you must do, and this sign gives a clear instruction to turn left ahead. You should be looking out for signs at all times, and know what they mean. Which of these is least likely to be affected by side winds? Cyclists. Motorcyclists. High-sided vehicles. Cars. Although cars are the least likely to be affected, side winds can take anyone by surprise. This is most likely to happen after overtaking a large vehicle, when passing gaps between hedges or buildings, and on exposed sections of road. You're following a large vehicle. Why should you stay a safe distance behind it? You'll be able to corner more quickly. You'll help the large vehicle to stop more easily. You'll allow the driver to see you in their mirrors. You'll keep out of the wind better.
If you're following a large vehicle, but are so close to it that you can't see its exterior mirrors, the driver won't be able to see you. Keeping well back will also allow you to see the road ahead by looking past on either side of the large vehicle. What's the main cause of brake fade? The brakes overheating, air in the brake fluid, oil on the brakes, the brakes out of adjustment. Brakes can overheat and lose efficiency when they're used continually, such as on a long, steep, downhill stretch of road. Using a lower gear when you drive downhill can help prevent the vehicle from gaining speed. There's a tractor ahead you want to overtake, but you aren't sure whether it's safe. What should you do? Follow another vehicle as it overtakes the tractor. Sound your horn to make the tractor pull over. Speed past flashing your lights at oncoming traffic. Stay behind the tractor if you're in any doubt. Following a tractor can be frustrating, but never overtake if you're unsure whether it's safe. Ask yourself, can I see far enough down the road to ensure that I can complete the manoeuvre safely? It's better to be delayed for a minute or two than to take a chance that may cause a collision. You're checking your trailer tyres. What's the legal minimum tread depth over the central three quarters of its breadth? 1 mm 1.6 mm 2 mm 2.6 mm Trailers and caravans may be left in storage over the winter months and tires can deteriorate. It's important to check their tread depth and also their pressures and general condition. The legal tread depth of 1.6 mm applies to the central three quarters of a tire's breadth over its entire circumference. When must you use dipped headlights during the day? All the time. On narrow streets. In poor visibility. When parking. You must use dipped headlights when daytime visibility is seriously reduced, generally to 100 metres, 328 feet or less. You may also use front or rear fog lights, but they must be switched off when visibility improves. Which of these signs means there's a double bend ahead? Triangular signs give you a warning of hazards ahead. They're there to give you time to prepare for the hazard. For example, by adjusting your speed. What must you do at this junction? Stop behind the line, then edge forward to see clearly. Stop beyond the line at a point where you can see clearly. Stop only if there's traffic on the main road. Stop only if you're turning right. The stop sign has been put here because the view into the main road is poor. You must stop because it won't be possible to take proper observation while you're moving. What's the main benefit of driving a four-wheel drive vehicle? Improved grip on the road. Lower fuel consumption. Shorter stopping distances. Improved passenger comfort.
By driving all four wheels, the vehicle has maximum grip on the road. This grip is especially helpful when travelling on slippery or uneven surfaces. However, having four-wheel drive doesn't replace the skills you need to drive safely. You're about to drive home from holiday when you become ill. A doctor prescribes drugs that are likely to affect your driving. What should you do? Only drive if someone is with you. Avoid driving on motorways. Get someone else to drive. Never drive at more than 30 miles per hour. You shouldn't drive if you're taking medicine that could cause you to feel drowsy at the wheel. Ask someone else to drive, or, if that isn't possible, find another way to get home.